All right, this is going to be part two. I kind of named this UFO Aliens or Fallen Angel Tech. This is going to be part two. I'm laying the foundation. All right, so just before I quit on the part one, I mentioned that the angels were created prior to the Earth. And I believe that all the aliens are, well, Compared to us, angels are aliens, all right? And that they, prior to the creation of the earth, that they were good. I, when did, so when did the angels defect and fall? When were they cast out of heaven? I think this is an important point. So... All right, so the angels were, uh, my opinion, were all good prior to the creation of the earth. The angels existed prior to the creation of the earth. Because the Bible in days 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 do not record the angels have been created. And in Job 38, the angels shouted for joy, the morning stars, the sons of God, shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. Now, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Now, why would the Bible say that? If, you know, Lucifer or the devil or Satan had fallen, why would he say it was very good? I mean, that God would be saying, oh, well, the devil, he's very good. Now, and God saw everything they had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And like I've mentioned, there are people that will tell you that there's an eighth day creation. I don't see that. I don't see it. But that's just my opinion. All right, so, and then when you go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. So what's the host? I believe that's everything, right? And on the seventh day, God, uh, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God rested not because he was tired, but to enjoy his creation. Verse 3, And... God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, prior to this, and then when you read Genesis 2, uh, you could read about the Garden of Eden. You could read about Adam. Okay, and there's, you know, uh, uh, the fall of Adam didn't happen until chapter 3. So I believe up until before Adam was created, Satan was good. He hadn't been lifted up with pride in his heart, and he hadn't fallen yet. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now if you think this is a talking snake, wrong. Let me prove it to you. How about Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9? And the great dragon was cast out. Cast out of where? Heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Why is he an old serpent? Because he'd been around for a long time. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So when did this happen? Well, that's what we're going to try to find out. People will tell you that Satan's not cast out until the future when Revelation 
starts being fulfilled. But parts of Revelation are were present time in John's day. Parts of it are past. Parts of it are future. And that's why people get so confused reading the Bible. Because you could have one chapter in the Bible, a paragraph. Part of it will be past. Part of it will be future. Part of it will be present. Then it will go back to the future. Then it will go back to the past. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, in the Asia, don't they have festivals with dragons? Yeah. If you look at Eastern dragons, they're more serpent-like. You could see that, Chinese New Year and what have you. They'll take something that looks kind of like a snake but with the head of a dragon type thing, as we're used to seeing them depicted. And it's serpentine. It's, you know, like, it's like a snake. Whereas in Western European culture, dragons are more reptile-like, not, not like snakes, but like giant dinosaurs. They're more muscular. So... The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Back to Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Huh. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat it, eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband and he did eat. All right, let's take, let's skip down a little bit. Uh, verse 13, Genesis 3 and verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, Now, obviously Eve and Adam had eaten of the forbidden fruit. Uh, let's take a look at something real quick here. Now, this is not going to be a big thing on Genesis 3. Other people and I have covered Genesis 3 in some detail, but let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 20. So Proverbs 30 and 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. All right, so we're talking about a woman, even though she's married, she's an adulteress, she's a whore. Because she has more than her, just her husband. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. What? She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness? So we're talking about a, an adulterous woman. She eats, she wipes her mouth, and says, I've done nothing wrong. Now, if you don't know what they're talking about here, they're talking about an adulterous woman. What, what are the characteristics of an adulterous woman? Well, let me tell you something. If you handed a prostitute a handful of $100 bills and told her you wanted her to eat, 
I'm not trying to be crude, but, I, you know, let's face it. She would understand that you're not asking her to go out to dinner with her uh, at Shoney's or Denny's. What do you think? No. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. So, verse, Genesis 3, verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Huh. Do you know beguiled means to be seduced? The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Now, it has many shades of meaning, beguiled. It could mean spiritually seduced, emotionally seduced, sexually seduced. I mean, it's perfectly acceptable in a sentence to say, the handsome, rich young man beguiled the young virgin with the promise to marry. As in marriage and matrimony. I mean, that's a perfectly acceptable way that, uh, you know, that means the handsome, young, rich man tricked the young woman, the virgin, into doing something prior to their marriage because he promised to marry her. Doesn't mean he did. Doesn't mean he followed through. It was called deflowering, if you will. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Interesting. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now listen carefully. And I will put enmity, which means hatred, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. So unless Eve was turned into an apple tree, they're when they talk about seed, they're talking about children. Now, God is talking to the serpent here. And I will put enmity or hatred between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. Isn't that interesting? Between the serpent's children and the woman's children. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, Okay, now here God was talking to the serpent, Satan, the devil. Now he's going to talk to the woman. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Huh? Now, this don't make any sense. Now, if, if Eve was ate a, a, a forbidden fruit, an apple, don't they always show you, you know, the, the snake hanging from the apple tree and Adam and Eve standing there? Yeah. Now, if she ate of the forbidden fruit, why is God going to multiply her sorrow and conception? In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. What was her sin? I mean, after all, if she ate a forbidden fruit with her mouth, uh, shouldn't God say, oh, I'm going to give you a toothache. Now, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Who was her desire to before this? 
and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Huh. Think about that. And then to Adam he said, okay, now he, first he's talking to the serpent, then he's talking to Eve, now he's talking to Adam. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Hmm. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now, when it says she was the mother of all living, was she the mother of all the goldfish? No. Was she the mother of all the eagles? No. Was she the mother of the angels? No. No. She was the mother of all living, of her kind. Okay? All right, and let's see, verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Huh. So, evidently, uh, found out they were naked, so God made coats of skins. All right, so, when did Satan and the angels fall? Well, obviously it was not before the earth was created. And obviously it wasn't before the earth and everything that was created by the sixth day was done. I mean, here it is. God had created the angels. Then he created the heavens and the earth. Then he created all the animals and fish and birds and everything else. And then on the sixth day created Adam and Eve. And up to that point, and then when, then he said everything was good, and then on the seventh day he rested. All right, so up to that point, between then and, so between Genesis 1 and between Genesis 1 and Genesis 3, somewhere in that time period, Satan fell. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at the fall. I've done previous studies on this, but I kind of I'm going to take a look here. Isaiah 14. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord of servants, uh, in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and saith, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee. Now remember, in the Bible it said that uh, all the trees in the garden, sometimes trees are talking about actual trees, and then other times it's talking about family trees. 
Because let's see, it says, yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee. Well, obviously, do trees have emotions? Plants? No. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Now, are, is this a figure of speech? Uh, you know. I mean, are, do trees talk and say, Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us? And what's a feller? Uh, somebody with an axe that cuts a tree down. You know, the tree falls. Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, that's a, that's a musical instrument, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven? Now this is Old Testament, people. Book of Isaiah, Old Testament. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Remember we talked about the morning stars in Job 38? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroy the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Ooh. But thou art cast, cast um, oh, no, hold on. All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden underfoot. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people, the seed of of evildoers shall never be renowned. All right, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 28, starting in verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, when was a human king ever in the king of Tyrus as a human in human form ever in the garden of Eden? No. I mean, there was a physical human king of Tyrus, and then there's the power, the prince of the power of the air, who was the king of Tyrus, the power behind the power. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. See the talking serpent, as you will, in, in Genesis 3, was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, the uh, topaz and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Created, not, not born. Created. Thou art the anointed cherub. What's a cherub? It's an angel. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Covered, covereth what? God's throne. 
Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, not born. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Why? Because there was war in heaven. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out. I will cast thee as profane out. I will cast thee out. I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Wow. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth. And in the sight of all them that behold thee, all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Uh, I think this refers to the lake of fire. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. I guess we'll read pretty much the whole thing here. Matter of fact, oh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do part three on Revelation 12. I think I'm going to make this another thing. I'm trying to keep these studies under half an hour because I can't, uh, minds.com will not let me load anything over a certain period of time. I think it's 30 minutes, but I'm not sure. That's why I've kind of abandoned minds.com. And uh, Bright Eon, which was real video, they're talking about limiting videos that are over an hour in length. So trying to keep everything under 30 minutes. All right, next, uh, part three, we're going to cover chapter Revelation chapter 12. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.